I kind of have to prepare myself for this video because some of the things I talk about, I'm like, hee hee, but this is just like biology. Hey guys, my name is Shayla. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I talk about motherhood. I talk about pregnancy. We do things pretty natural, pretty hippie, pretty granola. I have an almost two-year-old and an almost one-year-old. You can find me on Instagram, Hey Shayla. I also have a podcast, Hey Shayla, where I talk about all these hippie dippy things where I interview the experts. So let's get started. Today, I feel like a guidance counselor. Like Today, we're going to talk about fertility and the things that you we were not taught in school. Like Here are some key words that I'll use. Playing the piano means to have sex. KWB, which is a local radio station, used playing the piano when I was little in case like children were listening. When I talk about tracking your fertility, there will be a fertile window, right? And if you're not trying to get pregnant, you don't play the piano during that time. If you are trying to get pregnant, you do play the piano. I'm going to talk about playing the piano during that time and like how you would try to get pregnant. I'm also going to start with, I am not an expert in any of this. I'm not a doctor. I have no medical training. I have done my own nerdy research and just loved it. Like I loved learning about it. The book that I read was called Taking Charge of Your Fertility. It's a textbook. So there's like it's dense, but I was just like, oh my gosh, I love this. This is so interesting. Like one thing the book tells you, you might not know, but when men get cold, their balls rise. And when they're really hot, they get, they like lower. That's regulating the temperature of the sperm to make sure that the sperm doesn't get too hot or too cold and die. So interesting, right? So interesting. I'm gonna talk about the basics here and you might be like, honestly, Shayla, what? These are so basic, but like, I don't know where your starting point is. I have a friend who thought she had two holes. She had children and she did not know that she had three holes down there. Um, my editor is a man. Billy, I hope you learned something today. <laughs> Everyone's cycle is gonna be different. You may have endometriosis, you may have PCOS, you may have an irregular cycle. Like what I'm talking about is like general norms, okay? If you have any outliers, that's when you talk to your doctor. All right, we're gonna nerd out a bit here. I'm gonna teach you about the very basics of your cycle. A typical cycle is about 28 days, roughly. Mine was like 30 to 40, it varied a lot. It comes in two phases. You've got the follicular and you've got the luteal. The first phase, the follicular phase, starts when you have your period. So your period for like the first half, then you have a hormone called the LH hormone that triggers the release of the egg. It rises and it goes, okay, come on egg. You can get like test strips for the LH hormone to see when this spikes. After the LH hormone spikes, triggers the egg to come down, the egg comes down, you ovulate. You oh, ovulate oh, if you're trying to get pregnant. Then after your ovulation, your basal body temperature goes up. You're like, cool, why do I wanna know basal body temperature if it happens after ovulation? Because once you start tracking this for a few months, you can figure out about the time that your basal body temperature goes up and know this little window between your LH and your basal body temperature for when you're ovulating, your window of fertility. It's gonna tell you when to play the piano or when to not play the piano if you're not trying to get pregnant. I'm also gonna talk about your cervix. If you don't know what your cervix is, you have your vagina, which is where you play the piano. Then there's a cervix. People describe it as like a donut. They describe it as a bunch of different things. I said it was like a volcano because it literally comes down like this, like an upside down volcano. And then this is your uterus inside of that volcano where the baby grows. So you have your vagina where you play the piano, cervix, and then your uterus. I hope that's helpful. So there's three, four, three to four things that you can track to know where you are in this cycle. Pretty much when I was growing up, it was either like you had your period or you could get pregnant. I had no idea where in that cycle you could get pregnant, but like that's what I assumed. Then when you actually try to get pregnant, you're like, how, where does, where do I actually get pregnant? So it's in that ovulation period. It's that about two weeks after your period. But again, remember that follicular phase can move. So there's a couple indicators. So we've got the basal body temperature, We've got cervical positioning and cervical mucus. Lovely words, right? Whenever anyone is like, hey, I'm trying to conceive, I'm like, Bleh, here's all this information. So I figured I'd just make a video. So this video is actually sponsored by Natural Cycles because they help you with the basal body temperature. When you take your basal body temperature, you do it in your mouth. I also wondered, do I need to like take my temperature somewhere else? No, in your mouth. And it's the first thing you do in the morning before you even get out of bed. You wanna make sure that you get a thermometer like Natural Cycles that has the 0 .00. Those are the numbers that are mostly moving to know when that temperature spikes. Cause it doesn't move a lot. It moves within like a couple of degrees, but you can see it spike. I'm not even gonna show you my Natural Cycles chart because I'm still breastfeeding, haven't gotten my period yet, 10 months postpartum. It took me, I think 14 months and night weaning to get my period with my first. I'll show you like 
what the natural cycles um, chart looks like. So it says, your cycle starts on the first day of your period. Ovulation happens around the middle of the cycle, but this day can change depending on the pattern of your cycle. Then, sperm can survive for, for up to five days in the female reproductive system. This means you are fertile for six days each cycle. So six days before you ovulate, up until you ovulate. This is known as the fertile window. After ovulation, basal body temperature rises due to hormone changes. The algorithm uses this temperature to detect and predict ovulation. At first, the algorithm mostly gives red days. However, as you learn your cycle and detect ovulation, it will give you more green days. The more you use it, the more like zeroed in your fertility window is. It's a thermometer and then you enter your temperature in on an app. So if you're using it as birth control, it's obviously hormone free. Otherwise, it's like a personalized fertility tracker. So the other things are like cervical tracking and that is a little bit harder to figure out. It's more subjective, like you have to learn and do it consistently. Natural Cycles is like, we're not gonna rely on that. We're gonna rely on the actual numbers of your basal body temperature to figure out when you're actually ovulating. So if you're interested in starting to track this and figure out your cycles you don't have to like do it to get pregnant you can do it to not get pregnant and just to kind of start to learn your body the cervical stuff next is also kind of interesting so that's number one basal body temperature second is cervical positioning and openness this one's a little more invasive it's not just a thermometer in your mouth you're going to stick your fingers up there and feel around and i have a friend who's like Hard pass on that. Absolutely not. I will not do it. I think it's fascinating. You need to do this a few times to understand it and, and track it because it's positional height. So when you are about to get your period, your cervix will be really low. When you're ovulating, your cervix will be really high. Your cervical positioning, open and firmness, okay? When you have your period, your cervix will be low and hard. They say like the tip of your nose. When you are ovulating, it will be high, soft, and open. They call it show. So this is how I try to remember it because I'm often Googling this like every month. So you've got your uterus, the cervix, and then where you play the piano, right? When you are on your period or you are not fertile, your cervix will be really low away from where the eggs will come and closed. So it's like doors are closed, there's nobody even coming, lights are out, don't even bother. Then when the egg starts to come and you're about to ovulate, they're like, okay, let's do this. Let's open up the doors and get as close to the egg as we can. So the cervix rises, opens a little bit and gets really soft. So the sperm, once it enters the gates, it's right there, the egg's right there. It gets fertilized and then, you know, bada bing, bada boom. Not that easy if you're trying to conceive, you know that it's not that easy. So when you are not fertile, cervix is low, hard, and firm, like the tip of your nose, and closed. When you are fertile, it gets higher, opens up a little bit, and gets nice and soft to let that sperm in. You also wanna make sure that you wash your hands before you do this and like get in the same position every time. So if you're trying to feel up there while you're sitting versus like one leg up on the table versus like we're on the tub or like standing, it's gonna be a little bit different and you kinda wanna do it around the same time of the day. So like in the morning or in the afternoon. That way there's a little bit of consistency with like each time that you check. And when you first check, you're gonna be like high, low, soft. I have no idea. I just kind of feel this upside down volcano that Shayla talked about. The more you do it, you'll do it again. You'll be like, oh, it's right there and it's hard. Oh, I can't find it. Oh, it's way up there and it's soft. It's just data. We're just trying to figure out the data. Then we get to the third thing, which is cervical mucus. This is less invasive. You don't have to put your fingers up there. So this changes based on your cycle as well. We all know that when you menstruate, the cervical mucus, the stuff coming out is just blood, right? It's that nest shedding saying, oh, we did not get an egg this time. Let's let's get ready and build the nest again next month. When you're not fertile, it's gonna be really dry, really like glue, tacky. As you get more fertile, it's gonna get like wetter. It'll be more like lotion instead of glue. So then it'll be like egg white. So it'll be clear, but still really thick. You're ovulating. And then when you're done ovulating, it'll go back to like getting dry and sticky. And in my mind, I think of it like this. The water is gonna help the sperm get up there, right? So it's, it's really dry and sticky when it's like, nah, doors are closed, don't worry about here. And then when it's like, okay, we're ovulating, come on in. Here's all the water, just swim your way up. When it's watery like that, it's to help the sperm survive and like get to the egg. These things you can just see based on like discharge. You can like get some mucus and people will put it between their fingers to see like how the consistency of it. I'm like, oh, that's too much, but going and feeling your cervix, no problem. So everybody has their limits. Then you can also order like these hormone strips. So you've got the basal body, you've got the cervical height, openness and firmness, and then you have the cervical mucus. Then you can do like the hormones. And there's a bunch of hormones that go on during your cycle that I know nothing about, so I can't really talk to any of that. That's another way to track things. And once you start tracking this, you real you like learn a lot. I have a friend who was like, we were trying to get pregnant, so we just played the piano every other day. And I was like, 
if you don't want to play the piano every other day, here are a few things that you can track <laughs> to know like that six day period. And then you can play the piano every day, unless you want to play the piano every day. Just keep practicing that piano playing. But if you want to know when to really make that piano playing count, this will give you the window. It'll give you a bit of an idea. And it's just interesting to understand in your body. And then what's interesting is if you are trying to conceive, once you get pregnant, that temperature stays high. If it drops, it probably means that you're gonna get your period. Your cervix also stays high and soft. And if it drops and gets hard, then you're probably not pregnant. I tracked mine and I was like, cervix is high, cervix is high, cervix is high, cervix is high, and then I took my pregnancy test and I was pregnant. So it's kind of an interesting way to know if you're pregnant or not. I'm sure I missed things. This is not meant to be a comprehensive guide. This is meant to just like plant a couple seeds and be like, hey, did you know? Did you know that your basal body temperature is a thing? Did you know that your cervical positioning is a thing? That your cervical mucus is a thing? That you've got hormones that are moving all throughout and you can get more into that? I just haven't. Did you know? If you didn't, now you do. I hope this is helpful. I think this information could be really good for like people in high school just to start to understand their bodies. I think it could be good for people who are trying to conceive who never learned any of this stuff and are just learning their bodies now. Please share anything that I missed and I will see you guys next time. Bye.